Rabbi claims he's already meeting with Messiah and that the conditions are ripe for Messiah's return now. Coming to you now on Mikhail Messenger. Welcome to Mikhail Messenger. It's great to be with you all. If you haven't already, I encourage you, please hit that like button and that subscribe button and hit the notification bell to make sure you get our notifications every time we go live. You just never know when we may come out with another live video. We just are sort of sporadic about that. And we want to thank you for your support for the channel as well and encourage you to become a member by clicking the join button on this video or on the channel so you can join us behind the stream for more wonderful fellowship as we await the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Israeli, Israeli rabbi says he's already holding meetings with the Messiah. That's right. Uh, a snapshot of Israel's spiritual hunger as biggest rabbis are afraid to leave the country lest they miss the Messiah's coming. Now, this was actually came out just after Rosh Hashanah, so in the last two weeks uh, this is being reported. And uh, it's just one more rabbi prophecy uh, going along with many other rabbi prophecies that have pointed to this time. A recent interview on Israeli radio featured prominent rabbis explaining that the Messiah is just about to reveal himself. Rabbi Yaakov Zischolz told religious broadcaster Radio 2000 that Rabbi Chaim Chanevsky had told him that he was already in direct contact with the Messiah. To understand why religious Jews are taking this seriously, it's important to know that Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky was considered one of the two or three top rabbis of the ultra-Orthodox Jewish community in Israel. And Rabbi Zischolz says that Kanievsky and others of the mystical concealed rabbis had tasked him with informing the public of the Messiah's imminent arrival. Rabbi Zischolz began his explosive three-hour interview with a warning. The process of redemption is about to start happening very quickly and at a very fast pace. It is important that people remain calm and steady to act properly in the right time. There is a potential Messiah in every generation, and there are righteous men who know precisely who it is. This is, of course, true in this generation. Now, of course, we know the Messiah is Jesus Christ and that he's been with us through all generations. In fact, Jesus himself said this generation would not pass away until they see all these things come to pass. And Jesus is the Messiah for every generation. He is uh, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega. He once was, is, and forever will be. Uh, that is Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Getting the word out now that the Messiah is closer than ever is a matter of life and death, says the rabbi. Haven't you heard of Gog and Magog? That is what is going to happen very soon. Right now the situation is explosive, more than you can possibly imagine. Everyone needs to know whether they are on the inside or if they are going to be left out. Whoa. He went on to reiterate a number of signs of which prominent rabbis have taken note and that they firmly believe to be evidence of the coming of the Messiah. Rabbi Dov Cook, as everyone knows, is a very righteous man. He is one of the greatest men of our generation, says Rabbi uh, Zavievsky. Ten years ago, when Israel was suffering from a horrible drought, uh, someone asked Rabbi Cook when the Sea of Galilee will be full again. Okay, so this was 10 years ago, they asked this rabbi, so 2012 roughly, they asked him, when will the Sea of Galilee be full again? And there was a big drought, and they're wondering, and, and as we know, there's droughts all over the world right now, but interestingly, interestingly, uh, Israel is actually rising in sea level. So Rabbi Cook responded that when the Messiah arrives, the Sea of Galilee will be full. Sea of Galilee will be full. Remember that. In a few weeks, the Sea of Galilee will be full for the first time since Rabbi Cook made this statement. Now, that's, this was a few weeks ago, or about you know roughly two, two to two and a half weeks ago, that this statement was made, about 18 days ago. Uh, so we're going to take a look at this, and you're going to be amazed. Another righteous rabbi said that according to the current situation in heaven, there will not be Israeli elections. Rather, there will be a war. If the elections do take place, it's pointless since it will end like the other elections. No government will come out of it. Now, you may remember decades ago, Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri, one of modern Israel's most revered sages, as well as Lubavitcher Rabbi, Rabbi Menachem Schneerson, both predicted, that, both predicted that Benjamin Netanyahu would be the state of Israel's last prime minister prior to the Messianic age. A great many, if not most, of the ultra-Orthodox Jews in Israel continue to believe that to be true. 
As Israel's latest round of elections near, Netanyahu again looks poised for victory. So that's interesting. So does it mean uh, his last time in office would be the last time or just that he would be the last one, meaning he may get elected again and be the last uh, one in office? So this is just one of many prophecies, but take a look at this. Okay, so this this rabbi, Dove Cook, uh, said that the Sea of Galilee will be full when the Messiah returns. And there had been a drought and it wasn't full. It, it had been below uh, the level that, that is considered full. Well, check this out, okay? So as of January 9, 2020, the water level, uh, now this is talking about the Sea of Galilee, just, just to be clear what we're talking about here. So let me show you this at the top so you know I'm not pulling any punches. Okay, Sea of Galilee right there, okay? You see it? Right. So we're, this is all about the Sea of Galilee here. And they're talking here about the Sea of Galilee. And they're talking about when it's considered full. And now, of course, I've lost my spot. Let me just go back. Okay, here we go. So um, it says in January 2020, the water level was 211.10 meters below sea level. It will be considered full. Okay, remember he said that? Full. Now, this is just on Wikipedia. This is not a religious publication. This isn't. It has no connection that we are aware of. Uh, it says it will be considered full if the water level rises by another 2.3 meters or 7 foot 7 inches. Wow, this is huge. Okay, so what does that mean? What, what does that mean? So, um, so if you take a look at that, it, it, okay, so currently at, in January 2020, it said that it was... Uh, at a level of 211.10. So if you add 2.3 meters to that, that, by my calculation, would put it at 213.13. Kind of interesting. Chiasmus, 2 times 13 is 26, which is God's number, or 13 plus 13 is 26. So if you add 211.10 to 2.3, that would seem to take you to 213.13, would it not? And that would be considered full. Okay, 213.13. Well, let's look at the sea level of Galilee today. Today, the elevation of the Sea of Galilee, a drum roll please, is 213.6 meters below sea level. Okay, now they were all below sea level, just to make that clear. So it was a 211. They said when it gets to 213, Point thirteen, it would be considered full, and it's now at two thirteen point six. Can you believe that? So it's point, roughly point five above where it needed to be to be considered full. So according to this prophecy made ten years ago, it is now the conditions are now met for the Messiah to arrive. When the Sea of Galilee is full, the Messiah arrives. Okay. Now, just to look at a couple of these other prophecies, Mr. Yitzhak Kaduri, as you know, is famous for being the rabbi who, uh, who gave us the name of the Messiah. He actually uh, wrote it down in his own handwriting, and he told them not to publish it until a year after his death because he knew they'd probably dig up his grave and drag him through the streets if he had done it right away. So, uh, so he told them to wait a year after, once things had died down, and then they published it in a newspaper. Well, he actually gave the message of the name of the Messiah. He said, regarding uh, the abbreviation of the Messiah's name, he says, he will raise or lift the people and prove that his word and his teaching stand. This I have signed in the month of mercy, Yitzhak Kaduri. And you're like, hmm, gee, where was the name of the Messiah? I missed that part. He said he had been talking with the Messiah and that he would reveal his name before his death. And so he wrote this to reveal the name. And so they put it out a year after and thinking, oh, wow, we finally get to see the name of the Messiah. And they go, oh, okay, uh, regarding the Messiah's name, and then he just kind of gives an interesting phrase. Well, what he used was what they use in Bible code and in, in Kabbalism, in, in Judaism, is, is a, a code that they use to count, uh, to count the first letter of every word to spell out another word. It's a code. It's a secret. It was clandestine. He did it on purpose so that only those who really seek would find. And so when he did that, when you circle the first letter of each of these words, it spells Yeshua. Yeshua, as you know, is the actual Hebrew name of Jesus. Uh, Yeshua Hamashiach, Yeshua means salvation. 
And so that is actually the name, as you see here, that Mr. Yitzhak Kaduri wrote. Well, Yitzhak Kaduri was also the one that said there wouldn't be a government uh, at, at the time the Messiah returns. And as you notice, there's no government right now in Israel. They had one for a short time with Naftali Bennett. Uh, you know, technically you have uh, uh, Lapid as an interim prime minister, but it's technically not a government right now because they lost uh, their majority. So that's why they're moving to elections because they don't, technically don't have a government uh, at the moment. So that is being fulfilled. What Yitzhak Kaduri said is actually happening again. Now he said on the eve of 5780, the year of corrections, there will be no, uh, not be a government in Israel for an extended period which is kind of what they've had. They've had like five or seven elections a year. I mean, they, they, they just keep having elections because their government keeps falling apart. So you can argue they haven't really had a stable government uh, since that time. And once again, they don't have that government. Also, he talks about two Benjamins um, being established here. It's actually, he, he writes it out. It says, um, uh, it says, he says, on the eve of, of the year 5780, the year of corrections, there will not be a government for an extended period and the various camps will be in quarrel, much without a decision on either side. And then on Rosh Hashanah, interesting, the Jewish year itself, they will fight in heaven, the holy side against the side of evil, and God and his entourage will decide between them. And this is all I can say. From here I swore not to reveal any more secret or hidden things. Um, it says the statement of Kaduri, uh, the covenant uh, by Kabbalist Rabbi Sosan, who Kaduri had said had known the prophet of Yishoshan, he said, uh, let's see, also reference excerpts from the ancient book uh, by, by Shoshani. Oh, I see. So Kaduri was referencing Shoshadi, another rabbi who made the predictions about the government. So he says, uh, Kaduri said was known as the prophet of Egypt. Shoshani said there will become a day, on the, and on that day, that two ministers win the government in the land of Israel. Both of their names will be Benjamin, and neither of them will succeed in establishing the government uh, or kingship. On that day, no one understand that the king Messiah already stands at the doorway, and on the Sabbath afterwards, he will come and be revealed. Understand this and remember it. The yeshiva has all sorts of manuscripts by Rabbi Kaduri, uh, keeping safe, the Kabbalists, etc. It writings based on the Rabbi Shoshana's teaching. So when they talk about two Benjamins, we have a Benjamin Gantz, uh, who I think was also running at one time. I, I don't know the whole history off, off the top of my head, but I do recall them. Benjamin Gantz and Benjamin Netanyahu were both involved at one time. And, and Benjamin Gantz is still there. Now Benjamin Netanyahu is coming back in. So there's two Benjamins uh, for you right there. Uh, which is very intriguing. Um, so on on that note, oh, also, uh, there's another prophecy that's being fulfilled, and that is that uh, the rabbi said, when you see the Darnella Straits, the Russian ships in the Darnella Straits, put on your Shabbat clothes because you know that uh, the Messiah is at the door. And we've seen that with this war. Uh, the Russian Navy has moved into the, into the Bosphorus and the Darnell, Dardanella Straits, as prophesied by this rabbi. And, uh, and so it's time to put on your Shabbat clothes, ladies and gentlemen, because the Messiah is at the door. So there's a lot of prophecies pointing to everything happening right now is basically uh, what all this is saying. Now, just to be clear, the Sea of Galilee is here. This is where Jesus actually called his first disciples, Peter and John, the fishermen, in the, the town of Capernaum, which is right at the top here of the Sea of Galilee, uh, the northern tip there. And uh, that is where he taught, taught uh, you know, he, he taught his disciples, he taught from the boat as well, and he also met them out on the sea. So it's interesting that the Sea of Galilee is playing a role in this as far as the Messiah returning. I mean, little do the Jews know, they're, they're talking about the Sea of Galilee of all places. Now, um, you know, they're, of course, looking, they focus, tend to focus more on the Temple Mount and the Western Wall. But it's interesting that they're talking about the Sea of Galilee being full, like Jesus making... All, you know, making the nets full of fish from the Sea of Galilee, and yet they don't believe in Jesus. So it's interesting that they're kind of uh, connecting with Christ without even realizing it. And in Mark chapter 4, when Jesus went, was in the boat with his disciples on the sea, it says, That day when evening came, he said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, he took them along just as he was in the boat. There were also other boats with him. A furious squall came up, and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drowned? He got up. He rebuked the wind and the waves. Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? They were terrified and asked each other, Who is this? Even the wind and the waves obey him. So it's interesting that here we are with the Sea of Galilee, 
uh, meeting this expectation set 10 years ago that when the Sea of Galilee is full, the Messiah will arrive according to this prophecy and according to those who claim to have met with the Messiah. Just another report coming to you from Mikhail Messenger. Guys, keep looking up. All the signs are pointing. Even the rabbis are saying that Jesus is returning, and they don't even know it's Jesus that they're talking about. That's what's so amazing. So be encouraged, guys. Uh, the Lord is returning, and we're expecting him any moment now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Wishing you all the best, all the blessed, and Maranatha.